So getting to the point, an overview of suture needles. Hello everyone, today we wanted to talk with you about suture needles. And when working in the operating room, you quickly learn that there is a large variety of suture needles. And when a surgeon needs to sew and tie during a procedure, they have to consider the suture, which is the thread that they're using, but they must also consider the suture needle that they're sewing with. So in this presentation, we're gonna talk a bit about the differences in suture needles and the indications for choosing one needle over another. But before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone to please give some feedback and let us know what you're interested in learning about. Um, my beautiful coworker Angie and I, we share this information with you in the hopes of making this channel sort of a collaborative learning environment. So any feedback you have would be extremely helpful. I love pictures. So the purpose of this slide is to show some of the many varieties of suture needles. So just take a moment to look at the pictures and observe some of the different shapes of suture needles. All of these different shape needles function to um, perform different suturing techniques in different parts of the body. The different parts of the suture needle. So we're gonna do a quick review of the different parts of the suture needle. And if you take a look at these pictures, if you search the internet for suture needle pictures, you're gonna come across pictures like these. So we're just gonna take a moment and we're gonna quickly review the definitions and terms that are on these pictures. Kind of boring stuff, guys, but just important stuff to know. I'll try and go through it quickly. The first is the needle point, and that's the part of the needle that pierces the tissue. It's kind of like the pokey part of the needle, so to speak. Next is the eye of the needle, and that's the part where the suture and the needle attach to each other. This is also referred to as the swage, or sometimes people will even call it the butt of the needle because it's at the end. Next is the body of the suture needle, and the body of the suture needle is the part of the needle that connects the eye to the point. The next is the needle radius, and this is relevant in needles that are curved, and the needle radius is basically just your math definition of radius. It's, you would imagine that your needle made a full circle and there would be a point at the center of that circle. So the, from the point in that center of that circle to the body of the needle is the radius. Next we have the wire diameter and that's the thickness of the original wire used to make the suture needle's body. This is significant because the smaller the diameter of the body, usually the less traumatic it is to tissue. And lastly, I'm just gonna to touch on cord length. Um, cord length is the distance, if you were to draw a straight line from the needle point to the needle eye or the swage, that would be your cord length. So what's the point? We're gonna examine cutting needles versus taper needles versus blunt needles. So when the point of a needle enters a patient's tissue, it causes trauma to that tissue. So knowing the difference between the different needle points is important. And in this slide, we're gonna review some of the more common needle points available in the operating room. And first we're gonna examine the cutting needle. And the cutting needle, um, it's designed for the penetration of dense, irregular, and relatively thick tissue. Cutting needles have three cutting edges, so if you took a cross section of these needles, they would actually look like a triangle. And it's important to note that this category of needle cutting, cutting needles, it's actually divided into two subcategories. One is um, the conventional cutting needle and the other is the reverse cutting needle. And in the next slide, we're gonna get into more detail on the difference between the cutting and the reverse cutting needle. But for the moment, just remember that this category of needles is a little more nuanced than other categories. So they have the cutting needle and the reverse cutting needle. Next needle that we're gonna talk about is the taper point needle. And the taper point needles, they have a sharp point on them, so you still have to handle them with care, but they have this round, smooth body that makes them less traumatic than the cutting needles. 
Table point needles are generally used for closing things like soft tissue um, in the GI tract. You see them used a lot in vasculature, in fascia, and other soft tissues that are found below the skin's surface. And the last needle that I chose for us to talk about is the blunt needle. The blunt needle has a round body like the taper point needle, but the needle has a blunt tip instead of a pointed tip. The blunt tip for this needle, it actually makes it safer to handle, so you'll see a little bit less like needle sticks with these needles, but you still have to be careful when you're handling them. Blunt tip needles are ideal for very delicate and soft tissue, and sometimes surgeons, they'll use these blunt tip needles when they're working in areas that are um, difficult to visualize or reach, just because they're kind of doing like a blind pass with the needle sometimes. So it, it, they're a little bit safer. And one area that um, comes to mind where you see blunt tip needles used is in that abdominal cavity. And then just lastly, I wanted to remind everyone that surgeons, they're gonna be dictating what their needle preferences are and their suture preferences. So although we need to understand it, we also have to communicate as a surgical team if there's a certain needle that's not available or a certain suture that's not available. We don't want anyone guessing whether a needle choice is appropriate or not. So it's a dialogue that you have to make sure that you have in the operating room. We wanted to start by saying that this was just an introduction to suture needles. There's a lot more to talk about and um, hopefully we'll talk about more in the future. And we wanted to remind everyone that the four suture needle designs that we touched on, not the only designs, but the ones that we touched on in this presentation were conventional cutting needles, reverse cutting needles, taper point needles, and blunt needles. And lastly, we wanted to remind everyone that although your surgeon ultimately has the decision of what needle to use in a case, it's important to understand how nuanced needle choices are and why you can't just substitute one needle for another um, because it could cause damage to a patient. And we just wanted to thank everybody for listening. Let us know if you have any questions.